not everyone is cut out to become a card counter. And I don't just mean you have to be a math whiz, but to help you decide if card counting is a good fit for you, I thought I'd share six reasons why I chose to become a professional blackjack player. Hey, I'm Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship. I've been a professional card counter for over 15 years, and I now help train others to beat casinos at Blackjack with card counting. And over 15 years ago, I made the decision, I read a book, I decided, hey, I wanna give this a try, I wanna make some money with it, and it worked out very well for me. I made over $600,000 myself over a couple years of playing and then transitioned into running teams that beat casinos for several million dollars. And then me and two friends started Blackjack Apprenticeship, which I now own and run. And through Blackjack Apprenticeship, I have trained five, six, and even seven figure card counters. And I love it. What are some of those reasons why I decided to get into this? Number six, I enjoy the mental and math aspect of it. Now, yes, I happened to study math in college, but I wasn't really a math person. I did math so I wouldn't have to read books or write research papers. You know, I liked math as much as I liked anything else, but there is something about me that I enjoy the mental challenge. For example, when my son got a Rubik's cube for Christmas one year, what did I do? I sat there for a couple hours with YouTube videos, figuring out how to solve a Rubik's cube and then practicing it over and over until I could solve that Rubik's cube pretty quickly. It's just you know, in my personality that I like those challenges. I enjoy something that's going to be difficult. It's going to challenge my brain. Look, the math and card counting is really no more difficult than a third grader has, but there is something mentally challenging about doing everything at once. If you're afraid of being challenged mentally, don't become a card counter. If you're looking for easy money, don't become a card counter. But if you like being challenged, you might enjoy card counting. Number five, card counting is a great life experience and gives you some really great stories. So at 22 years old, I got into card counting and within a year or so, me and three other guys are flying around the country playing high stakes blackjack. You know, I'm playing at the table with professional athletes and we're making six figures, we're getting thrown at casinos, all that stuff. And it's it makes for a good story. It's better than sitting in a cubicle, just, you know, working for that paycheck. If you enjoy the thought of an adventure where you don't know what's gonna be around the next turn, then card counting might work for you. But if you want stability, if you wanna clock in and clock out, you're not going to make it or enjoy card counting at all. Number four is I like doing things that are outside the box. I'm the kind of guy who was flipping musical gear for a profit in high school. Or when iPhones were newer, I was waiting in line the morning of a new release and buying two new iPhones, not to keep them, but to flip them on eBay and make a thousand or $2,000 pretty quickly. Most people aren't gonna do that because it takes work and you know it doesn't even sound fun to some people. To me, that sounds like a blast. I can remember the first time my wife and I went to Hawaii. We went with Ben, who I uh, used to run a team with, and his wife, and we sat through all these timeshare presentations and as soon as it got to the end and they're getting their sales pitch, we're saying, we're not at all interested, we're gonna leave now. And through sitting through those stupid presentations, we did all of our adventures for free. We were snorkeling for free, we were biking down Haleakala for free, you know. A lot of people, they wouldn't do that because that it's, it takes someone that's okay with something abnormal, being, you know, okay with people's disapproval or whatever. But for me, that's just kind of the way that I'm built. And if you are also an outside the box thinker, you don't mind going against the flow of everyone, you know, the nine to fivers that, that uh, clock in and clock out and don't try anything adventurous or unique, then, you know, you might be the right kind of person that you don't mind being a contrarian. You don't mind going against the norms. Number three, I enjoy taking money out of casinos. Now, when I first started as a card counter, I had never even been in a casino until I had spent maybe a couple dozen hours practicing at home, and I didn't really know or have any opinion about casinos. But once I started spending enough time in there, I realized what you know kind of dens of greed they are, that, that they're really trying to get people to become compulsive gamblers and get every last penny out of people in casinos. Oh, you're about to leave? Let's give you a hotel room so you don't have to leave tonight. You can sleep here, get right back to gambling in the morning. Oh, you're hungry? Don't leave the casino. We'll feed you so you can just keep gambling. I love 
taking their money. It's one of the thrilling parts about the money that I've made over the years as a card counter running teams is that we didn't take it from the other players, like a, a poker player, we took it from those casinos. If we hadn't been in there, those casinos would have a lot more money. If you want to be on the casino's good side, if you want them to love you and you think casinos are just a great boon to your local economy, you're not gonna enjoy card counting. But if, like me, you don't mind taking their money, bleeding the beast or whatever you wanna call it, then you might enjoy card counting. All right, these last two are the ones that are the most important to me, starting with number two, which is that card counting was my best opportunity for an active investment. I could have gotten a job or card counting was the other option that I saw before me. And yeah, it took a lot of work, it took practice, it took discipline, those things didn't daunt me. And for a few years, it really was the best way I could make money. I went from, you know, substitute teaching, making 75 bucks a day, was that $10 an hour, to making a couple hundred dollars an hour as a card counter within, within a year's time. I had no better opportunity to make that kind of money, so it was a no-brainer for me. If you have better opportunities, if you can make that kind of money in your day job, hey, maybe you just stick with that and you save up and, you know, try to retire early, if you've got other business opportunities, maybe you do that. But card counting is a tool. There's lots of tools out there. There are lots of ways to make money. And if card counting is a good opportunity for you, then pursue it. But let's be clear about this. Card counting is not a good way to get out of consumer debt. If you've got credit card debt or you need to make money quickly, card counting is a bad fit. Card counting is an investment. It's a short-term investment compared to index funds or real estate where it could take seven to 10 years for markets to settle. But see card counting as an investment. You have to have capital to put into it and be willing to take the time to get to the long run. Otherwise, it's not a good fit for you. And the number one reason why I became a card counter is the freedom it provided. When I saw that I could control when I work, when I didn't work, how much I work, that was a thought I had never encountered before. I thought I was gonna work some job that I was just gonna hate, put in the hours, and that was gonna be it. Car counting did not feel like that at all. Until it did, until it became a grind. And for me, that's when I put less time into playing myself and more time into running a team. My personality is after I've kind of mastered something, I, I get a little bored and I want something new. So when Car Kang didn't feel like freedom, which it did for two, three years, it definitely did. Well, then I moved on to another way to leverage my skills, which was running teams. And that was great. I loved training the players, sending them out and making money through my skill set of helping them beat casinos. And that was amazing and felt like freedom for six or seven years until it started to feel like a grind. At which point I started focusing on blackjack apprenticeship, which to this point has yet to feel like a grind. So here's my point. If card counting sounds like freedom to you, if it sounds like something that you would enjoy putting your time and energy into, then it might be a really good fit. If it sounds like a grind, don't become a card counter. There are so many ways to make money. You don't need to put in the hours at the casino. Hopefully that's helpful for you to decide is card counting gonna be a good fit or not? That's at least the things that I thought through and why it's been a good fit for me and why I don't spend as much time in the casinos now as I used to. It's not because I can't do it, it's not because you can't make money anymore, but I personally wanna do things that I enjoy, that don't feel like a grind, that fit my long-term goals and feel like freedom to me, and hopefully you can find those same things for you. If you wanna see if card counting is a good investment for you and feels like freedom and not a grind for you, then check out our channels. You can subscribe below or watch some of our other videos on card counting and taking money out of casinos.